Hi everyone. Welcome to Learn City English class. My name is Francis Ikurowo and I'm your English tutor here at Learn City. Today we'll be looking at nouns. What are nouns? Why is it important for us to study nouns? Why is it important for us to know the different um, forms of noun or types of noun? Why is it important for us to know how they are used? You all know in your primary and secondary school schools that a noun is the name of any person, animal, place, or thing. A noun is the name of idea, of an idea, of a movement, of a belief, of a concept. The list is endless. A noun, as long as it is an entity that bears a name, anything you designate a thing with, you any name you give a thing, or any name you decide that that thing should be called with or by, is called a noun, okay? It's not as simple as, as that, okay? You have an entity that bears a name, okay? You're gonna say, this is this is a noun. I have a name, which is Francis. Which is Francis. You have a name. Um, you have a, the, 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 your school has a name. Even your school is a name. Even place is a name, okay? Before you get, before you move it down. So you're like having, let's say, animal, which is a name, then you're moving it down to the specific name that you give to that particular animal now, okay? You have a place, then you're moving it down to the specific, a place which is a name, then you're moving it down to the specific name that you give to that particular place. You have a thing, the same thing, you move it down, you have an idea, you have a concept, you have a belief, you have a movement, okay? Everything that exists on earth, everything that exists on earth has a name because it's the bedrock, as I said earlier, as I must have said earlier, nouns form the bedrock of grammar. And grammar is an organized system of rules through which we make sense out of the world, out of this world. Okay. For instance, I would like you to think about or imagine a world where there are no names. Everything that exists does not have a name. I don't have a name. You don't have a name. Place. A place doesn't have a name. Even place is a name. Even name is a name. Even noun is a name. Even thing is a name, right? Even person is a name. Person as the word is, okay? So imagine that word where there are no names, where everything is just nameless, okay? How do you think that word would have been? Kind of do a quick reflection. It's going to be chaotic. Chaotic because it's going to, there's going to be... A, a lot of confusion. It's going to be full of confusion. It's going to be meaningless. It's going to be a word that you can't make sense out of. You can't make sense out of that particular word. It's just, it's, it's, it's just nameless. Yeah, I, I cannot call someone. You cannot call. Any, I cannot call anybody. I cannot call someone. You can't call anybody. You can't tell a, a bike man that you're going to somewhere. Okay. You can't tell your mom that you're going to your school or you're going to a cafeteria or you're going to eat somewhere or you're going to a party because party is a name, cafeteria is a name, a place that you're going is a name, your school is a name. So this is how important nouns are. This is how important names are in grammar. Okay, even grammar is a name. So, so imagine. Now, it, it shows that God in his infinite wisdom must have thought about how this world would have been if there are no names. Okay. If there were no names, that was why he decided that, okay, Adam should name every living creature or every non-living creature that exists. Do you understand? So Adam gave them names, okay? And that, that extends to your concept, to your belief, to your movement. And over and over again, over the years, names involve. Okay, over and over the years, names evolve because we can form name, we can form a name out of an existing name. Do you understand? It's it's complicated when you move, okay, when you move up the ladder as, as far as nouns are concerned. Okay. So you're talking about an entity here which bears the name. So we're going to say this is a nominal entity. Okay, nominal. An entity that bears the name. It's not something how it's not something um, difficult. It's not like a big word. Okay, so because in in uh, in grammar, in some grammar tests, which you're going to say something like nominal 
right? So you're going to see something like um, pronominal, okay? Pronouns, pronominal, nominals, um, nouns, it's the same thing, okay? Now, why is it even important for us to know what nouns are? Why is it important for us to study nouns? Why is it important for us to know the types of nouns? Why is it important for us to know the nuances? Why is it important for us to know the plurality? Why is it important, the plurality or how to form plurals of nouns? Why is it important for us to know uh, the functions of nouns? Why is it important for us to know a lot of things in nouns? So here you're, you're, you're beginning to know that a lot of things are subsumed, are, okay, are under nouns, okay? For instance, take, 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 take for instance, you can't talk about an adjective without having a noun. Okay, because by definition, an adjective is a word that describes a noun, a nominal entity, an entity that bears a name. All right. And so that means nouns are like the bedrock. Okay, a noun is the bedrock of, of every other part of speech. Every other part of speech, I mean, noun, uh, pronouns, adjectives, adverbs, and verbs depend on nouns to exist. Do you understand? Or to, to function. Okay, talk about your, your pronouns now. A pronoun is a word you use, use the instead of a noun. Okay, that means if a noun does not exist, there can't be, there can't be a pronoun. Do you understand? So it, it makes sense that nouns first exist, all right, before your pronouns would exist. It makes sense to say that adjectives first exist before your uh, pronouns first exist, before your adjectives would exist. Do you understand? So that is how important. Okay, you can't talk about, for instance, let's say let's say a verb. Now you can't talk about your verb, your subject verb agreement, concord, without talking about nouns. Okay, because nouns are what constitute the subject that you have. Nouns are what make up the subject that you have. You can't say are they. Uh, okay, uh, a singular subject is followed by a singular verb without talking about it now. Okay, say Ade goes to school every every day, every day of the week. So you're talking about Ade here, who is a noun and is the subject, and you're talking about goes, which is the, the verb there. So if a noun doesn't exist, you can talk about a verb. So a noun is the bedrock of subject verb agreement. And a lot of things depend on nouns to to exist. So now you're beginning to know how important nouns are. You're beginning to know how important how important it is for us to study the nature of nouns, to know the integrity of nouns. So we're going to move from the we've known what nouns are. So we're going to move uh, down to the types of nouns, the functions of nouns, the plurality of nouns. You know the the nouns that. We borrow from other language uh, from other languages. Okay, now let's talk about types of nouns. The types of nouns that we have are the types of nouns that we have are divided along some parameters. Are divided along some some lines. Okay, first of all, we're talking about based on the specific names that you give to a thing. You're talking about um, proper nouns based on specific names. Remember earlier I, I said I talked about a let's say a place. Okay. A place is not a specific name. A place is a common name. Right. Then when you move it down, okay, to let's say Bodhijana or to um, let's say Lagos now, for instance, you're moving it down from the from the common to do what to the specific name that you give to that particular thing or based on what what is common to all that is what called common nouns based on the specific names that's what we call um, proper nouns and based on the the common names so that's what we call common nouns we can have nouns based on what we can see okay what we can see and touch for instance you, you have a phone you have a you have a table you have a computer you have a bag you know you can see a bag and you can touch that particular bag. So that division is going to give us the third type of noun, which is which is called what? A concrete noun. Do you understand? Concrete because you can see it and you can touch it. Do you understand? Or we're going to talk about nouns based on uh, what we cannot see, 
we cannot touch, but we can feel it because we know it exists. Do you understand? So here you're talking about abstract nouns. So look at the division now. I move from having the specific name that you give to a particular thing, okay, which is called the proper noun, or and um, the the common name that you give to a thing, which is called the the common noun. The down to what can be see, seen and touched. So you have a what you have your concrete nouns and what cannot be seen and touched, but they can only be felt by every every living thing. Okay, we know it exists. Okay, for instance, you have to talk about um, talk about air. You can talk about um, wisdom. You can talk about intelligence. You can talk about um, beauty. Okay, you can talk about um, philosophy, for instance. You can talk about communication, for instance. You can talk about a whole lot of things that we all know exist. We feel it. We use it. It's all around us, but we cannot touch it. Right, and we cannot see it. And when I mean see, I mean we cannot see it with our, our, our naked eyes. And obviously, with, with the use of with the use of microscope, so that gives us the borderline, the the gray area there, which we're going to discuss. If you're saying that, okay, we cannot see this with our naked eyes. What about some nouns, some abstract concepts that we actually can see? Okay, like your wave now that we actually can see with the, with the aid of a microscope or whatever we use. Okay, so we're going to discuss that later. Then we're going to look at nouns based on whether they can be counted. Okay, so talk about count nouns or you talk about um, countable nouns. And we're also going to look at nouns based on whether they cannot be counted. All right, I mean, nouns that cannot be counted. So you're talking about non-count nouns and you're talking about uncountable nouns it's, it's it just depends on where you're where you're where you're learning from or the grammar textbook that you, you use i um, prefer generally to say you have count nouns and non-count nouns okay the same things that you can count like um uh like pen like like book books pens you know um uh, numbers you know and a lot of things okay like bags and all of that and talk about things that cannot be counted so talk about water you talk about um intelligence you talk about um you talk about rice for instance you talk about i'm being caref careful now you know talk about beans you talk about um um, um fuel you talk about air i'm being careful because the the concept we talk about bread okay you talk about meat okay i'm being careful here because the concept of no count now as we're going to look in our subsequent classes is is not that is is not uh, it's not saying we, we can say that i'm not going to prescribe this broad rule and say that your no count now is announced that we, we cannot count because indeed in some cases we can count these non-count nouns they can be counted do you understand for instance let's say you have um, a cup of rice now okay you have a cup of rice you can if you're indeed jobless if you don't have any work <laughs> you don't have any job you can say you can just you know pour the cup of rice on on let's say on the table and start counting it before the end of the day you're going to know the number of 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 rice okay that we have there you can do the same thing for beans and all of that so if rice and beans as you've known from your secondary primary schools are no count nouns what other thing do we have as regards this no count nouns what other things can we say can what other reason okay because the grammar is largely based on on logic okay in some cases it can be just uh, illogical all right but what can we say about this guys we're going to look at that in our subsequent classes that's why the discussion of nouns is such an interesting one that everybody should learn everybody should know how to use it okay we're going to also talk about the nouns that we're still talking about nouns i've, I've talked about um proper nouns versus common nouns i've talked about um uh 
count nouns versus non-count nouns. So we're going to talk about nouns that that border on um, having a group that has that has the same features or similarities as a whole. You're talking about this thing as a whole. Okay, so you're talking about collective nouns. Talking about collective nouns because the whole group is treated as one. Do you understand that? So collective now, because the whole group is treated as one. For instance, you talk about um, a forest of trees. Talk about a forest of trees. So here you know that trees, okay, for, it, for us to talk about a, co a collective now, which we're going to also look at in our subsequent classes, it has to do with the fact that the whole group that you're referring to is, is in one place, okay, exists together. So you say you have a forest of trees. So the collective noun or the collective name which you give to that particular thing is now a forest. Okay. Most times when you write or in some textbooks, you can decide to just cut the the trees, the 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 other uh, what's it called the other noun away. Okay. A forest of trees now becomes a forest. Now a forest there is the collective name. Because the, when you have a forest, of course, that means you have a place where there are many trees. Do you understand? We can also talk about, for instance, now a library. Okay, now, it's not library; it's library. Okay, talk about a library of books. A library of books. Apparently, you're talking about a place or a room where there are lots of books. Do you understand? And oftentimes, we just delete the books and of books. We delete that, and we say a library. The same thing we can do for uh, an army of soldiers. All right. So we just delete of soldiers. I have what? An army. So an army then there, a forest there, a library there. Then they all become your collective name. And we call that collective nouns. Okay. There are other differences as other uses of collective nouns. For instance, talk about the poor, the rich, the less privileged, you know, the elite, not elite, the elite, the, the disenfranchised, you know, and all of this, okay, you have it as, as a group and they all, you, just have, you also give that name collective noun to them. They have their own agreement, they have their own uses, they have their own peculiarities. So I'm saying that for all of these types of nouns, we're just, I'm still going to talk about the last one here, which is nouns that are formed from verbs. Okay, nouns that are formed from verbs. So here you talk about gerundive nouns. Gerundive nouns. They are formed from verbs. They are the ing form of a verb. Sing becomes singing. Okay, read becomes reading. Lead becomes leading. Dance becomes, becomes dancing. Okay, so you have this dancing, leading, reading, singing. You have all of these as your gerundive nouns because they are they are the, we call them the ing form of a of a of a of a of a verb. Okay, we call them we call them verbal nouns. Okay, now you understand that what we're going to understand, what we're going to discuss in in our in our in our next class. Okay. And of course, I'll still be here with you all. Is the, the differences that exist, the uses. Okay, we're going to start from proper nouns versus your common nouns. That's what we're going to examine. Then we go to your count nouns versus non count. We go to your abstract nouns versus your concrete nouns. Then we go to your collective nouns. Then we go to uh, the, your gerundive nouns. Then we examine the functions of nouns. We examine the plurality of nouns. We examine a lot of things on that noun. So we're going to look at the differences that exist between these these two um, divisions that I've, I've cited, we're going to look at the, the, the uses, the peculiarities, the agreement with, uh, with verbs. Okay, so it, it's, it's, it then becomes interesting that to know that what a proper noun is and what a common noun is, how do you use a proper noun, what is, what is proper about proper nouns and what is common about common nouns. Okay, so I'm going to stop here for today. You've learned, you've understood what nouns are, you've known the types of nouns. So in our next class, we're going to talk about proper nouns, the uses of proper nouns, and how should we differentiate
proper nouns from common nouns. Thank you.